Susie, and I'd like to welcome you to episode 8 of Crochet, Knit, and More with Susie. And this episode is called Cuckoo for Dish and Washcloths. And uh, also, along with this, I'm going to have a little segment called Welcome to Harvey. And well, I'll explain that a little bit later. But if you're new to my podcast, I really appreciate you stopping by and checking me out. And if you're a return viewer, thanks so much for joining us again. And if you're new, if you like what you're seeing, please uh, check the like button below and hit subscribe. I'm looking for subscribers. What my uh, whole goal here is in uh, with this podcast is to share my love of affordable crochet, knitting, and uh, sewing. I've been doing this for quite some time, and I thought uh, I'd like to join with the community as well as uh, share some of the uh, stuff I picked up over the years and things I found recently that have been helpful and uh, helped me to uh, make my addiction more affordable. Um, that would include, uh, you know, sharing some of the patterns that I found online that are free or very, very inexpensive, um, as well as my vintage books that I picked up. Um, kept over the years and the new ones that I bought. I do a lot of thrifting. And uh, another thing I'm going to be doing too, on the first uh, several episodes I recorded, I did a lot of uh, editing. I'm going to just kind of let this roll and see where it goes. Uh, I think maybe it'd be a little more spontaneous, a little bit easier to watch uh, rather than trying to, uh, you know, go through and, and, uh, and try to, uh, you know, edit this to the point where it, it's kind of getting stale. So, I'm going to throw this out just the way it is and see what happens. Um, I just started designing a few months ago, and I'll be releasing some of my patterns too, and I'll put those up for free. Uh, also, to go along with the theme of affordable crafting, uh, crochet, knit, whatever it might be. Um, recently retired, a little bit about me. Um, I live in southwest Michigan, and I'm recently retired, and I'm enjoying that. I'll tell you, this has been really good nice not to have to go to work anymore and uh, my time is my own and, uh, and it gives me a lot more time now to do my crafting and to kind of think about it what I want to do down the road with it so anyway if you like what you see you're new to me or uh, you haven't subscribed yet I'm looking for subscribers so please subscribe below and hit the like and also too, any comments you have to make I'd appreciate knowing what you think I'm going to be asking maybe for uh, some feedback down the road, uh, down, down, not down the road, but as I get along into the podcast here and see what you think about stuff and get your opinion on some things I'm thinking about doing uh, a little later on, project-wise. Um, just a little housekeeping stuff. I'm on Instagram under uh, Susie Makes One. I think I've got that behind me. I, I don't know if you can see it. Yes, it's on the sign behind me. Um, I'm also on uh, Ravelry as Suzy Q57, and that's spelled the normal way, S-U-S-I-E-Q57. Um, I also have a group for the podcast under Ravelry, and that's listed as Crochet Net and More with Suzy Podcast, and we'll share information about the podcast and project things. If you want to comment, introduce yourself there. I'd appreciate you guys checking that out, too. And... Um, Let's see what else I've got here for you. Uh, oh, I have a blog, and that's where I'm going to be putting a lot of my free patterns and musings or whatever on uh, crafting. And that's uh, crochet, knit, and more with Susie.blogspot.com. Um, and like I said, I'm just going to start winging these episodes. Um, I think it'd be a little more spontaneous that way and maybe a little bit easier to watch. So I'm going to start just winging these things as we go and try to stay away from uh, so much editing. Uh, like I did on the, the first seven episodes. So let's get started. Uh, as I said, this is going to be called Cuckoo for Dish and Washcloths. I've kind of gotten into those lately. Uh, Dishcloths, as you know, are kind of an easy project to do. They, uh, they're a nice take-along thing. And uh, if you don't have a lot of time to work on something, you can go ahead and do a dishcloth up. doesn't take a lot of time. It's almost immediate gratification, and it's a useful item to do. Um, now, uh, First one I want to talk about, and I did a ton of these. I'll show you what I got here. Um, there is a, I don't know, you guys may be familiar with her. Her name's Crystal, and she does, um, it's called Bag O' Day Crochet. And she has a lot of podcasts that she does, uh, tutorials, tutorial on her podcast. She's on YouTube. 
I believe she also has a, a website or a blog spot that she does as well. Um, her name's Crystal, and she's got some really, really nice tutorials. You should check her out if you haven't already. The one that I found, I found it uh, completely addictive, was her Waffle Weave dishcloth. I'm going to show, show you one that I did. Actually, I did a ton of these. Uh, this one was done in Peaches and Cream. It's their striped, striped uh, cotton. Uh, I think the colorway is, um, just call it, let me put my glasses on so I can see. I think it's this one. Let's see, lot color. Doesn't really say, it just gives a number. Oh, here it is. Sorry about that, guys. Sandstone, sandstone stripes. Say that five times fast. But anyway. I did a couple of those up, and unfortunately, I was trying to do go for a match set. This is the same colorway, but look at the difference in the colors. So I was a little disappointed in that. There really isn't a lot of quality control, apparently, um, at the Peaches and Cream uh, factory. Uh, I could, you know, even though they're the diff they're different uh, dye lots, I would expect the colors to be a little bit closer than that. Look at the difference between the oranges in that. So you might want to watch out for that when you get the peaches and cream. I do like that cotton. However, there really is a difference in the dye lot, so I'd watch that. Uh, the peaches and cream, too, it's kind of a rough yarn uh, when it comes to... It's great for kitchen use. Uh, really good for, you know, making up a dishcloth, to, you know, for kitchen use or whatever. I would not recommend it. Putting it on your skin is awfully rough. Um, so anyway, that was the first two that I did with that waffle. Here's another one. I don't remember what colorway this one was. Um, I think this is, I love that cotton from the Hobby Lobby. I love that cotton. It's a lot softer. This one you could probably use as soft enough for a washcloth that you could use. Uh, it would be nice kind of for an exfoliating type thing, but I do like that colorway. Uh, I don't remember which one that was, but anyway, this is not that important. Here's another one that I did, and this is also in, I believe it's uh, Peaches and Cream. Hang on just a second, I can tell you for sure which one that one was. I'm going to set this one aside. Here's one I've got the tag in, and I've got, this is also Peaches and Cream, and the colorway on this one is Sweet Pea Stripes. I like that one too. That's also, the, I said, the Waffle Weave. I got I went kind of crazy on those. I did quite a few of those, <laughs> probably about ten or twelve of them. Um, let's see. Um, another pattern that uh, Crystal has on her uh, YouTube thing, uh, on her bag o day crochet and her tutorials, is for a cobblestone pattern. I also made a bunch of those. I don't have those to show. I've gifted those already, but those came out really nice too. I'll try and insert a picture of a couple of them, the cobblestone ones that I did uh, here. This is also, I believe it's peaches and cream, and I think it's called pageantry. I bought a big cone of that one a while back, and I'm trying to use that one up. I've used that in quite a few little areas. That's another one of the waffle weaves. A couple more left here. Uh, these were from Capri. I've got a deal on a haul back last fall from uh hey rhymes haul last fall anyway i got a deal at uh, hobby lobby last fall on this capri yarn and i got it for a dollar skein it was i think a dollar 99 the regular price and the colorway that i got a various colorways are all these really nice pastel shades and i love this it's really soft it's a um let's see i can tell you what it is it's a blend Oh, it's 57% cotton, 28% nylon, and 15% polyester. And this is what those look like. This is that Capri. I believe this was a, a salmon color. Really soft. These are going to make really, really nice washcloths. So that you can see the waffle weave stitching in there, too. It really came out nice. That's the back of it. That's what your back looks like. So they're not reversible, but... There's the front of it. There's your waffle weave. Here's another one out of the Capri that I made. Love that. Came out very, very nice. 
And I've got uh, one other one I did here, and I believe this was either in peaches and cream or lily sugar and cream out of dark brown. We'll go along with the other ones. This one's a little bit smaller. I don't, make, I don't think I made it as large as the other ones. So anyway, um, then I also kind of went a little bit crazy here, and I just made one just out of my own head. I think it's just a double crochet with, uh, I believe this is also uh, what I had left over on uh, either peaches and cream or sugar and cream. I'm sorry, I don't know. I can't remember what the colorway was on that. Anyway, you can get all this stuff at the big box stores, whichever colors you like. Um, like I said, I would recommend if you're just starting on crocheting or knitting, uh, dishcloths are really a nice project to start with. Um, they're just, you know, they're easy to make, immediate gratification. And uh, they come in handy. They're a practical thing to have around the house. Uh, one other thing I made, too, and this is my own pattern. I'll be posting that before long on my blog. And it'll also be in Ravelry. Is this one. And I made two of these. And um, I made them out of... Let's just see. I made them out of... Um, it's called Comfy Cotton. Yeah, there you go. From Lion Brand. I don't know if you guys have seen that yet at Walmart. Uh, they probably also carry at the other box stores. The only store in my local area I've seen it at is Walmart. I would imagine Joanne Fabrics probably has it too. But it's very soft. Uh, you could use this for garments. And it comes in a larger ball than your um, sugar and cream, peaches and cream, unless you get the cone. But it comes in a lot larger um, ball, skein, whatever you want to call it. A lot better to use. I guess it, more, it comes more like in a cake. Um, it's 50-50 cotton and poly blend, so it's 50% cotton, 50% polyester, and that's where the softness comes from, is that poly. And it's so soft. Um, $5.99 yardage is 392 yards per cake, and that's 200 grams. And it's just really, really, really affordable and very, very nice. I love it. Um, I'm going to look around for some sort of a pattern, maybe to try a shawl out of this, but I love the stif stitch definition it shows. Really, really nice. So I would re really recommend this if you guys can find it where you're at. I think you really, really like this. And um, like I said, I'll be putting up the pattern that I came up with. It's a simple uh, double crochet, single crochet stitch pattern, repeat. And um, I'll be putting that, posting that before too much longer on my blog and uh, also in Ravelry. So um, kind of keep an eye out for that and that'll be up before long and um, that's going to be totally free. Alright, I wanted to also show you a few of the other dishcloths that I've made. Not recently, but I've made these and I recommend these patterns. Um, this one here was called the Almost Lost, Lost Dishcloth. This is a free Ravelry download. Uh, Julie Tarsha Sorry, I'm looking down. I got my notes below me. Julie Tarsha. I made this out of the pageantry um, colorway, and it's peaches and cream. I got this at, I think they still carry this at Walmart. I've had this for a while. I'm trying to use it up. I've had this stuff for years. And this is knit, and it's knit in a strip. You do, uh, it teaches you a little bit on how to do your um, short rows. So it's handy for that, and uh, at the end of it, you sew it up, and you pull it up, and it kind of goes up this way. Very, very simple pattern. It looks more complicated than what it actually is, but it comes out nice. I made one in that colorway, and I also made this one. I think this one's called Swimming Pool. Yes, Swimming Pool. And I also use this for um, my background thing for my channel. And when you look up there and you look up my channel, you'll see this is a background thing. Um, like clip art on there. Yeah, clip art. Or one of my graphics I put up for that, so really like this one too and that's the almost lost dishcloth pattern free Ravelry download by Julie Tarsha um, another one too that I really like it's called the copycat dishcloth and that's by Michelle Krauss and that's also a free Ravelry download and I'll show you that one if you look at it it mimics a regular washcloth because you got your little panels on each side where it kind of tips in right here and right here very simple to make it's stockinette stitch and garter stitch. And that would be a very, very good beginning project for anybody just starting out. 
teaches you how to do your crow, uh, your uh, crow, um, garter stitch and your little panel in here with your stocking net. And I made this one out of, I believe it was Hobby Lobby. Um, I love this cotton, Desert Dawn, and that's a discontinued colorway I got on one of their little uh, closeouts a couple years ago. I like the way that pulls too. They have some very nice stuff, but any of the I love that cotton is great. It's very soft. It's very nice. Uh, if you can pick up some of that, it's reasonably affordable. I think it's uh, two ninety nine or three forty nine. It went up a little bit, but when you go out and buy that, take your forty percent off coupon uh, when you do buy it, and that way you can save a lot of money on it. Um, Last but not least, I got this one off of Knitting Paradise. If you're not familiar with that, it's a forum, knitting forum, that you can join for free. And they have a lot of free patterns out there. Now, I took this one and kind of hacked into it a little bit and made my own uh, variation of it. And you can certainly, if you'd like to have that one, go to my Ravelry project page. And that's called Garter and Seed Stitch Dishcloth. And that's... Uh, like I said, it's a free pattern. Go to my Ravelry pay, uh, project page under Susie Q57. Look up Garter and Seed Stitch Dishcloth. And you can see how I did my variation on it. It's basically more of a recipe than a pattern, but you know, it's very easy to follow if you want to try that there. Feel free to go down and down, uh, download that, the instructions for that and how I did it. And this will make you a nice one too. And you can learn how to do the seed stitch off of that as well as the center part of it is garter stitch and that's a nice one too this was made out of I love that cotton as well and I believe it's a discontinued colorway called dark teal and those are my dish claws and I think the next thing we'll get into is my pattern books uh, and we'll go into that segment in just a moment so we'll see you there Portable dishcloth pattern books. I've got a number of them I want to show to you and talk just a little bit briefly on each one and where you might be able to find a copy of them or some of them are still in print. Some of the ones I have are no longer in print and some of them have been like revised. So without any further ado, I want to talk about the first one I have here. This is called Towel toppers and dishcloths, and I may have talked about this one on an uh, earlier podcast, but I really like this one. It's by Glenda Winkleman. Now, some of you guys may be familiar with Glenda. She's on YouTube, and I believe she also has a website under Creative Grandma. She has a lot of crochet. She does uh, showing how to do different crochets, crochet stitches. Uh, she has crochet tutorials. She does a lot of stuff on the internet. On crochet um, and she has a lot of useful very useful tutorials check her out I think you really like her especially if I don't care what level crochet you're at if you're a beginner you've been at it a while you're looking for a free pattern to use or whatever she has a lot of freebies out there plus she also has a lot of different stitches myself I have a hard time trying to figure out stitches just reading them out of pattern book sometimes I have to have somebody show me how to do the stitch and I can pick it up and she does that a lot, and she's very good at it. So you might want to check her out. Her name's Glenda Winkleman. She's the creative grandma on YouTube. But this is a book that she published. Uh, well, actually, Annie Zadig published this. Uh, she wrote it, and I think this came out about eight, nine years ago. And it has all sorts of dishcloths. She's got the toppers for hanging towels. A lot of really nice stuff in there. Um, Here's the back of it showing some of the projects you can do in there. And I'm going to try some of these out, especially the toppers uh, for the towels and uh, dishcloths as well. So, Glenda Winkleman, check her out. You'll be glad you did. Uh, the other books that I have here, now this one is also by, well, this is by Leisure Arts. And it's called The Big Book of Dishcloths. I got this probably close to 20 years ago. Uh, I think I, it was when I was buying stuff from Annie's Attic. We used to get it by mail. Yeah. It was before they had the internet where you could order stuff there. So you get like catalogs in the mail. You order things. I got this one from Annie's Attic uh, years ago. I noticed when I was at Joanne Fabrics not too long ago, they had this one redone. I believe you can find this. It's just re, kind of a revised version of it. This has got a really a lot of one, nice ones in here too. You can see on the back number of uh it's just some of the dishcloths that are in there 
and that's called the Big Book of Dishcloths. And these are all crocheted. And I believe they might have something along these lines you can knit too if you don't know how to crochet or you don't want to learn or you, you, know, you prefer to knit, whatever. Because I do both. Depends on the mood I'm in that day. But anyway, big the Big Book of Dishcloths is by Leisure Arts. Now I picked up a number of these. Now uh, those were both crochet. This is one that I picked up. It's called the Three Way Dishcloths, and these are all knit. But you got different ways to do it. If you do a loom knit, I think it's got the nook in there, directions for that, and it's also got um, regular needles. This is a nice one. I got this uh, this last fall out to Walmart. It was a closeout. I don't know if you can still get this book or not. If not, you might be able to find it on Amazon or eBay. I would recommend getting this if you can find it. It's got some really nice um, patterns in there. You can see there, there's a little sampling on the back of what the patterns are. But it really, there's the front of them. You can see a little bit closer up. It's got a lot of really nice things in there. So, three-way dish closet. That's 11, there's 11 different designs in there. So I would recommend that one if you can find it. This one I know is still out there. I got this at Hobby Lobby a few years ago, but I think they still publish this one. It's the dishcloth dresses. It's just cute. Just something different you can pick up and a little different design you can put on your um, dish detergent bottle. And then there's a thing in the back that shows a little illustration of some of the other designs that are in there. That's real cute. I think I'm going to make up some of these and maybe in a podcast or two down the road. I'll show what I did on that one, but I thought those were really cute, too. And this can still be obtained, uh, I think, either Hobby Lobby. I think I've seen it at Joanne Fabrics, too, here in the States. So that's a cute one, too. And those of you, got, you guys are out of the country, you might be able to get something like that on Amazon or um, eBay. This one, I believe, is still in print. It's uh, Lily Sugar and Cream Kitchen Colors. And some, yeah, if you're familiar, you probably guys have seen this in the store. It's been out for quite some time now, probably seven, eight years easily. And it's got that design there, and then they got the design on the back, just showing you kind of a sampling of that. Now, if you go out on the internet and you go to, I believe it's Inspirations, Yarnspirations, that's it, Yarnspirations, you go out there and they've got a lot of free dishcloth patterns on there that you can get for lily sugar and cream or if it's peaches and cream I'm not exactly sure what what ones that they do but they have that as well out there so try that too if you don't want to buy a book you can get some free ones online you can get a lot of free patterns on Ravelry too you know like I just went through a few of them there that are free um, but they have those as well this one I got at a thrift store not too long ago but I think you might if you look around you might be able to find the same thing on Amazon for a nominal price you know um, this one's got a lot of really neat things on here it's uh, 12 design it's leisure by leisure arts and they may have this maybe revised a revised version of this out too I'm not sure but you know a lot of times they'll do that uh, where they'll publish this and then uh, a few years later they'll come out and change a cover call it a little something different and if you're not careful you're ending up I bought books like that before and it's like wait a minute here I got the same thing at home so kind of watch that if you collect these books like I do I collect them and I don't get rid of them. I had a garage sale about 15 years ago and sold a few of them, but for the most part I've kept my books. And I'm glad I did because I refer back to them all the time. Uh, this one is another crochet dishcloth book. It is called Dishcloths. And I believe this is by, yeah, Leather Leisure Arts. And this is by Candy Jensen. And if you've been at this craft a while, you're probably familiar with her name. She's quite a well-known designer. And there's a thing on the back, a sampling of the dish claws that are in that particular book as well. And last but not least, I got this, uh, and I think you might be able to find uh, some of these for free on the Yarnspirations uh, website. And I believe they're the ones that put out the sugar, sugar and cream. Uh, this is Mix and Match uh, Kitchen. And I got this at a thrift store. You can see the price, it was a $4.95. I think I paid $0.70 cents for it. It's got like a pattern on the back for a little apron. There's like a, I don't know if I'd ever make that. It's a casserole thing, holder. Um, but anyway, casserole cover, carrier, whatever. But it's got some dishcloths in there and some toppers and different things. So anyway. And, uh, you know, we're coming up now for the uh, 
spring of the year where people are going to have garage sales and whatnot, uh, check out garage sales. Check out church sales, bazaars, whatever, for these books. A lot of people, maybe uh, they get a book, they don't use anything on it. After a while, they're cleaning stuff out and they're going to get rid of it. See what you can find at garage sales and uh, thrift stores and uh, bazaars and whatnot. Because that's a good place to buy books cheap. That's where I get most of mine at. So I try not to, whenever possible, pay full price for anything if I can avoid it. I either get it on sale or I don't buy it. Um, I prefer to do it that way. Like I said, it makes the hobby affordable. Once in a blue moon, I might pay full price for something, but usually I have a coupon or something I can use with it. So anyway, uh, that's that particular thing on the books. And um, why don't we go into my uh, works in progress at this particular point in time. So let me see what I got here I can show you. Um, oh, yes. Right here. I got my stuff down here that I'm looking at. I wanted to show you this. I picked this up at the Dollar Tree not too long ago. I think I've had it maybe a year. And I think they still carry these things. They're over by the uh, tote bags, cosmetic bags, and whatever. And this is a cosmetic bag. It's got a little zipper on it, a little handle. It's really nicely made. It's kind of a, I don't know, like a. Like I said, it's like more of a cosmetic bag, so this is more vinyl -y. You know, it's more satiny. It's got satin to it, but a little more of a vinyl feel. The inside of it's got a vinyl lining. But what I really like about it, it's a very nice little project bag. And I got it, and I thought, you know, I think I could use that for projects. And I also have one that I keep my circular needles in. Just the perfect size for your smaller circular needles, or even the ones that are, you know, rolled up and still in the uh, packaging. So, anyway, you see this? Perfect size uh, for, like, socks. Like a 50-gram ball of yarn. This is a little bit more than 50 grams. Um, but it's a perfect size to keep your socks in. Another thing, too, what I like about it is the fact you got that zipper on it. So, you can zip it up about halfway and then pull your yarn out from the opening where the zipper isn't zipped all the way, which is really great. Let me uh, demonstrate here. You see it? I'm going to show you it right here. See? Set there and pull it right out of there. Great. And they have these all different colors. So, you know, if you're looking for an inexpensive project bag, check out Dollar Tree. Um, I've also uh, found some in there. Uh, I can probably show those on another podcast, but I've also found them in there that are more like a tote bag type thing. And those are okay, too, but I really like these ones with the zippers on them. It's just like a little, nice little cosmetic bag is all it is. Um, come in handy, and I'm sure you, uh, your imagination, you could probably figure out some other uses for these, too. Um, but I really like these. And I'm going to probably see if I can get me a couple more, hopefully while they still have them. But as far as I know, I believe they still have them in stock, depending on what your Dollar Tree would have. Uh, I live in Michigan, and we kind of get, you know, uh, whatever they have left over, I guess to say. I hate to say that, but, you know, sometimes we don't get the... We're kind of at the kind of the end of the line, I guess you'd say, when it comes to some of the stuff when it comes to retail. You guys on the left, uh, west coast and the uh, east coast kind of get stuff better, qu quicker than what we do or in the bigger cities. So I live kind of in a rural area. We don't get a whole lot of stuff here quickly. So anyway, but I really like those. And um, I wanted to show you with this project that I'm working on right now. This one, I think I showed it on an earlier podcast. And this is made out of, from a Hobby Lobby, it's the wool-like yarn. And that is, I believe, it's a, it's a mixture. And I'll put it up here. And it's showing up pretty accurate color-wise. I made a sock out of that some time ago, and I, I got the second sock syndrome that a lot of us are subjected to, or subject to. And I never finished it up. Oh, okay. It's 85% acrylic and 15% nylon. And I made this sock probably about a year ago. And sometimes life can intrude. I won't go into a lot of detail on that. But, you know, some, sometimes uh, uh, life com comes in and kind of gives us a little bit of a bump uh, when we have plans. So, but anyway, I digress. But anyway, I'm looking at this right here. And I'm looking at the sock. And this one I made toe up. Problem I have with toe up, and I don't know if anybody can help me out on this, 
When I do toe up, I have a heck of a time with the cuff being a little too tight here. I don't get as much stretch in there. And I've tried all different types of, you know, I've tried that Jenny stretchy bind off. I've tried a lot of the different supposedly stretchy bind offs. And I end up with a tight cuff. So with me, I kind of like to do the toe up, but it just doesn't work for me. So I have to do the cuff down and then, you know, finish the toe with a Kitchener. Um, what I'm doing now, yay, is the second sock. Just got that started the other day. And um, I'm hoping to have that finished before too much longer. And I'm using my 9-inch Chowgu sock needle. Love that thing. Um, I think it's uh, 2 and a, two and a half millimeters, uh, one and a half U.S. size. But I love that thing. If you guys haven't tried the 9-inch uh, sock needle, give it a shot. I think it's so much quicker than trying to do it with the... Um, Working with that magic loop, and tw uh, every time you go through a row, you got to twist those um, cords. You're tired of it after a while. I can do these socks so much quicker. It eliminates probably a third, or I would say close to half the time it takes me to knit one, to knit a sock when I use these. The only problem I run into with the nine inch thing is when I get to the heel, I have to change it off to a different thing because I don't know what it is with me, but I have a hard time trying to do just that little nine inch thing and trying to do the heels. I don't do a heel flap and gusset. I do just a regular fish lips kiss heel. I like that one. It's about the only one I've ever been able to figure out how to do. So anyway, but if you go to my Ravelry page, you'll find this little project there. I'm working on this right now. So this one's going to be cuff down rather than toe up. It's the new one I'm starting out. But I do like this yarn. Um, I used it uh, in a heel on a heel on another sock that I made about a year ago, and it's holding up pretty good. I was a little leery to, uh, that's another reason why I did not continue with the sock for a while, because I wasn't sure on how well the yarn would uh, wear. And I had that in that other pair of socks that I did. I made, like I said, I made the heel that way. And it seems to be holding up pretty good. So I'm going to go ahead and make this other sock with it and go from there. But I think what I might do with what I've got left over, I went out when they had this yarn on sale, and it's fairly affordable. It used to be $2.99 a skein. Uh, it is now, I believe, three something. I think it might be three twenty nine, um, and you get for a skein. I think it's a hundred grams. Whoops, got the wrong one here. I think it's a hundred grams, but I'm not sure. Hang on, just a second. I tell you. Yes, it's a hundred grams, six hundred seventy eight yards, three and a half ounces, six hundred twenty meters. That's good yarn. If you can find it where you're at, I'd recommend trying that one. It's a good one. Um, I've got a bunch of them on sale not too long ago, and I think what I'm going to try and make out of is some sort of wrap or shawl because it is very soft. It is the softest darn yarn you'll ever want to play with, and it looks nice. It's got a nice feel to it. feels good while you're uh, knitting with it, and it's got, I don't know how well, it, hopefully it won't peel up, uh, pill up too bad. The um, one I made the heel on, I got a little pilling with it, but it's not too bad. So for what I paid for it, I can't really complain. Um, if you get a pair of socks, you could probably make uh, two pair of socks and probably a small cowl or maybe a couple uh, or a pair of um, fingerless mitts out of 100 grams. So, yeah, this is not bad at all. Um, I really, really like this. I'd recommend this if you can find it. It's, uh, like I said, it's called the Wool Like Yarn Hobby Lobby. It's loops and threads. There's a little picture of uh, what it looks like. But yeah, if you can find this stuff, give it a try. I think you'll like it. I know I do, and it's affordable. Very affordable, and it's, it's worth the price. Um, Alrighty, that's when it works in progress. Um, I just finished up a hat. I don't, I can, uh, I'm going to go get that and show it to you too. We're back with finished projects, and I want to show you a few things that I finished recently. This one I really like. It is... Uh, from it's called the Comfy Beanie. Let me show this around here. Yep, the head is a little bit smaller than my head. Um, sorry about the rattling on the styrofoam here. So that the form that I've got on is a little bit smaller than the average head. It's probably about 18 inches around. So the hat appears to be a little bit larger on it. Uh, my head, I've got a relatively small head, big brain, but a small head. Um, my head, I think, is about 21 inches around, maybe 20 and a half. 
and I have to kind of tighten the hats down a little bit for my size of my head. So I had to kind of hack this a little bit. Um, I did use, this is uh, called the Comfy Beanie. It's by Julie Farmer. It's a free Ravelry download. I think it's from Red Heart. I'm not exactly sure, but it, you can get it for free. There's a link to it on Ravelry. And I'll try and put a link uh, down below for you, too, on my stuff. I used a US 7 needle, which is a 4.5 millimeter. Um, I hacked this to add a little longer cuff. I've made this hat before, uh, but the cuff was not long enough. And here in Michigan, we need uh, something relatively warm for your ears. So I like to have a double cuff. And I made this uh, a little bit longer cuff-wise to cover my ears, so I'd have a double thickness there. Um, the yarn that I used is from Hobby Lobby. It's called the Yarn Bee Fair Isle, and I love this stuff. It's really, it's an alpaca uh, acrylic blend. I think it's 25% alpaca and 75% acrylic. It's really soft. Really nice. It's got a nice little halo to it. Love this yarn. Um, I used, uh, I think there's, hang on just a second, I'll get the um, a little more particular information regarding the yarn. I'll be right back. Here's the yarn here. Here we go. I got this. It was a discontinued thing at Hobby Lobby. The Fair Isle. That's what the skein looks like. I used about a half of the skein. I believe it is, let's see. Excuse me, it's 80% acrylic, 20% alpaca. I wasn't off by too much. Um, you can get, I know they still have the fair oil. This uh, particular color has been discontinued. It runs $5.49 a skein. Uh, use your 40% off when you're in there. Get your 40% off coupon and use that when you're in there. You can save quite a little bit. But you, this is really nice yarn. Um, I love the way it works up. You can see almost like it looks almost like I did color work with it, which I did not do. So it makes it look like you're a little bit more skilled than what you are. You spent a little bit more time with it than what you did. But I love the way this works up. And I really like the colors on this one. I was a little bit hesitant to use this for a hat. I have a gray coat, and I don't know if that's going to work. And I don't usually go for the dark, uh, brighter colors like this. I'm a little more uh, a subdued color person. I might go with the... Maybe some neutrals like a gray or blue, whatever. Um, but I really like this. I think it worked out really, really nice. And uh, anyway, it comes with the entire skein, and I know they still carry this yarn. Um, three and a half ounces, 100 grams, 262 yards, or 240 meters. And it's very soft, guys. It's very, 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 very soft. You'll like this. It'd be. I think I might uh, got enough left here to make a small cowl, and I think I'll make that to go with the hat. But uh, the hat itself, uh, go to my Ravelry page at uh, Suzy Q57, and it'll tell you how I hacked the pattern to make it a little bit uh, longer. Because I added some uh, a few rows once I got beyond the uh, cuff. I doubled the cuff, pretty much doubled the cuff size, and then I added a few rows as I went to make the hat a little bit bigger lengthwise to cover my ears so I wouldn't freeze here in our lovely Michigan winters. So anyway, this is the Comfy Beanie by Julie Farmer. Uh, free Ravelry, down, Ravelry download, US 7 needles, 4.5 millimeter. Uh, check my Ravelry page out and that will give you the, uh, all the particulars on how I hacked the pattern. So that's finished project number one. Okay, and I'm going to take this off the form, and I'm going to put this one on. This one, it's okay. I'm not real thrilled with it. I kind of messed up the top of it. And this is called the, and like I said, you can tell that this particular head uh, form is a little small. Um, this is called the Lattice Stitch Hat, and it's also a free Ravelry pattern uh, by Yaya Loves to Knit. And I've made two of these so far, and they're okay. I really like the pattern. It's, it's good for a free one. I made this out of Lion Brand Wool Ease Tonal. And I'll show you what I used here. I'll set the hat down. I'll show you the yarn. Um, and I got this on a discontinued thing, too, at, uh, yeah, I'll, uh, at jo uh, no, not Joins, Michaels. 
Now this yarn to start with was $7.99. I got it on clearance for $3.99 about a year ago. And that'll show you what it looks like. And that's a, quite a bulky yarn, very thick. You can see that right there. Um, I believe this is a five. Yeah, it's a five bulky, and it's pretty thick bulky too. Um, this had it's 80% uh, acrylic, 20% wool. Um, this color weight is called Buttercup, and like I said, it's discontinued. I don't think you can find this anymore. Um, it was a nice yarn to work with. It's relatively soft. Um, and for what I paid for it, I think it was pretty good. The problem I ran into is I kind of got a little bit off track towards the top of the hat. You see it comes to a point. I think I might put a pom-pom on top of it to cover that up. I didn't want to go back and rework it. So, yeah, it kind of comes to a little bit of a point at the end. <laughs> so, anyway, uh, you know, this was called human being making stuff. That's why, uh, you know... They make pom-poms -pom sometimes. I think, you know, they come in and cover up a multitude of sins there. So, anyway, you kind of see that where it comes to a point, which it shouldn't. Um, I made one before. I'm going to go grab the other one I made and show you. It's a gray one, and it doesn't have the point. I'll be right back. Well, I'm back, and I wanted to show you the other hat that I made out of the same pattern. And uh, this also was out of discontinued yarn I got at, uh, I believe it was Hobby Lobby. Um, and you can see... The difference between the two. <laughs> One's got the point, one doesn't. You see it right there. This one I think I showed on an earlier podcast. And yeah, I like them. They came out pretty good. I'm not really into bulky hats, but they're okay. You can kind of see the difference between the ends there. One's kind of got that point, the other. The gold hat's got the point, the gray one doesn't. And I need to put some sort of pom poms on both of them. I think they look a lot better. But anyway, uh, that's the. Um, Lattice Stitch Hat by Yaya Loves to Knit. And um, great, if you got bulky yarn, that'd be, it's a great use of that. Um, the pattern itself I thought was pretty true to size. I didn't have any trouble with it, you know, working it up or whatever. I did do a little modification to mine. I like to use that twisted rib stitch for the cuff. I believe she just uses like a regular old-fashioned or just your basic uh, rib type stitch. I use the twisted knit stitch. You know, like they do the twist, you go into the back of the stitch rather than the front, or you know, you go into the back of the stitch instead of the front when you're knitting a knit stitch. Uh, go on the internet and I'll show you on uh, YouTube on how to do that to twisted rib. It's very simple. But I like the way it comes out and I like the way it looks. And I uh, picked that up from Mina Phillip who's the knitting expat. She makes a lot of uh, socks and hats and whatnot. Check her out, too, on YouTube. I think you'll enjoy watching her. Uh, she's a designer, and I, I talk about her just about every podcast that I do. I really like the stuff that she does, and I appreciate her energy, and I think she does an excellent job on the podcasting. Makes it look simple, um, and it is, you know, I don't know, depending on what it is, maybe it's simple for her. It's not for me. It's more of a challenge, but I'm... I'm kind of finding my way through here but anyway that's uh my knitting things uh finished projects um uh, acquisitions i've come up with a few little things here i thought i'd talk about i'm gonna set this off to the side here recently i was at our local hobby lobby and they had some yarn on sale and i, I really didn't need any more yarn i've got i hate to say i've got like about 357 yarn uh, anyway i didn't really need any more but I thought, hey, the price is good, and it's uh, natural fibers. And I don't have a lot of natural fibers in my stash, and I really wanted something different. So um, I picked up the yarn that they had. Um, we just got our income tax refund back, so I thought, well, what the hey, might as well have it. And uh, actually, I want to show this to you. It's still in the bag. Uh, whoops, sorry about that. Let me shake the camera. Can you see this? Put it up here where you can see, and I want to take it out of the sack, out of my plastic sack. This is all cotton yarn. I believe I got 19 skeins of it for $20. And this is nice stuff. It's really nice. Uh, I'll tell you what it is. It is called, and I'll show it, Cotton Fine. Whoops, sorry about that. 
hot and fine. And it's from the Brown Sheep Company, dyed by them, Mitchell, Nebraska. Uh, the color I got is CF560 My Blue Heaven. My Blue Heaven, okay. Uh, it's 80% cotton, 20% merino wool, 50 grams, uh, 222 yards. And I've got, like I said, there's a number of colors in here. I've got a number of blues. There's green. I believe there's an off-white. I think whoever bought this might have bought it with maybe a shawl in mind or possibly an afghan because there's quite a bit. Like I said, there's 19 skeins of this yarn in here. So I got, yeah, there's green, the blue, two different shades of blue. There's a My Blue Heaven and there's a darker blue in here. Then you got the green and you got the off-white. You can see this from the side here. I hope you can see it okay. But I've got all this yarn for $20. I don't know. I think I looked it up online shortly after I bought this. I bought this about a month ago. And it seems to me, I think this yarn sells for like maybe $6 or $7 a skein. So that's a pretty good deal. It's called uh, Cotton Fine. All Season Luxury Cotton Yarn. It's a cotton merino uh, blend. And I really, really like that. I thought that was really a good deal. Karen, Simply Soft, and whoever bought this probably bought it for maybe a shawl project, a, a poncho, or maybe an afghan. Uh, I believe there's six skeins in there. Yeah, there's six skeins of it, full skeins, and I think I paid five dollars for this, which isn't bad. Uh, you know, the uh, Simply Soft sells for, is it three? $3.99 or $4.99 a skein. These are big skeins. They're the bigger, I think they're a little bit larger skeins. These are, it's a little older yarn. It's probably been around for a little while. I know they went to a smaller skein not too long ago. It might be an ounce uh, less than what it used to be. So I got that, that for $5. And then I got this. And this is kind of a treat for us here. Sorry about the rattling. I'm in the States, and you guys in the UK, if I got anyone from the UK watching me, or maybe from Canada, you're probably more familiar with this yarn than I'd be, the Sirdar, Sirdar, and if I'm butchering the name, let me know, Sirdar, S-I-R-D-A-R, Rio, Cotton Rich DK, and I got, uh, I believe, five skeins of this, five or six. Yeah, I think there's six skeins in here. This stuff sold for $5.25 a, a yard, or excuse me, skein. $5.25 a skein. Uh, it says Made in England on it. And uh, I got it. All this, I believe this was also five or six bucks. So I got it for like a dollar a skein. And I thought it would be really, really nice to, to try. I've never tried any of the UK yarn. Um, I'm looking forward to using this in something. I'm not exactly sure what it will be, but I do like the color. Kind of a pink, kind of a dusty pink. That's a 50 gram ball. And machine washable. So um, I would imagine the folks in the UK, you know, are kind of, they get excited when they find yarns from here. And we get excited when we find yarns from over there. So anyway, I thought that would be a nice one to try. I had never used that particular brand of yarn before. I've never seen it around here uh, in where I live. I know I could probably get it online if I, you know, so chose, but I don't really, I prefer not to spend that kind of money if I can avoid it. So anyway, that's what my recent uh, haul was, and I thought I would show that to you guys. And I've got one other finished project I want to show you, which is non-yarn related. And I'm going to probably make some more of these too in the not too distant future. And what this is, is just a little pillow I put together. I got the instructions off YouTube. I think it was a shabby fabric podcast. And I'll put the information down below on where I got this from. But basically what it is, it's a pillow cover. Um, let me show you the back of it. it just It's like a little envelope. It slips over your pillow. I'll take it apart here. We can kind of see it. Very simple. Very simple. Very quick. Um, just basically take your pillow form and... Uh, Measure around it, 
and then cut it out and basically you sew two seams and two edges together that's it clip them and you got a nice little pillow cover and you know what I really like about this is the fact that you can change your pillow your pillows every so often to a different fabric so you got a whole different look for your you know your living room wherever you want to put your pillows or you could make up a bunch of these and put them on your bed put them on your couch put them on a chair uh, wherever you want to use them to decorate in your home I think they're really a neat idea um, very simple it would be a real simple project for someone who's just learning how to sew to try or you know if you got a, a, a kid that's learning how to sew and they want a simple project to try this would be an excellent one for them and I'll put the in the description box below I'll put down where I got this from but I really enjoyed that uh, it was very quick very easy and uh, anyway I'll quit playing around with this and uh, get on to future projects and we'll sign off um, one other thing I was thinking about I've got a couple other ideas in mind for some future projects and um, I'll just set this down here A month and a half ago, I was out at uh, Barnes & Nobles looking around a little bit. And I don't normally buy Vogue knitting books, but once in a great while, I'll splurge and get a new magazine. And I found this. I think it's out of print now. Or, yeah, display until 3-5-19. So this was like last month's, or maybe not last month's, but the last issue you could get. And this is the Vogue. And this has really got some nice stuff in it. Uh, but there's one project in here I'm going to show you that I think I might try and it's called light and shadows and I'll see if I can find some yarn around here I can use for it uh, obviously I'm not going to buy the suggested yarn that they have for it I'll show you right here you know, without revealing anything too much it's like a wrap stole type thing and it looks like it's a fairly simple knit but yet it's got uh, enough uh, interest in it to, and different stitches in there to hold your interest so I think I'm going to give that one a try in the not too distant future maybe my future uh, future project down the road so that along with my towels I'm going to be making uh, some hanging towels been getting into that lately so I'll see what I can come up with on that one too so that'll be a future project too I'll probably be showing Everybody, I'd like you to meet Harvey. Say hi to everybody, Harvey. Harvey come to live with us a couple weeks ago. Uh, we wouldn't, we weren't intending to have Harvey come live with us. He was a little stray. He was on our porch, our front porch. Like I said, I live in uh, Southwest Michigan, and it's still pretty cold here at night. And I heard a little cat crying out in on their front porch. And I looked out, and there was Harvey. I tried to shoo him away. He wouldn't leave. <laughs> he would not leave. Um, and uh, I told him if he stuck around for about three days, I would see what I could do about giving him a home. And uh, he was with us. He came a week ago Friday. And it's been almost two weeks now. And we're getting close to two weeks now. And he stayed all that weekend. And uh, the following Monday, I got him to the vet, got him checked out, made sure he was okay. And uh, after that, he spent a couple days at the vet, didn't you? Yeah, getting observation and stuff. He spent a couple days there, and uh, we, had him, uh, take, we had him taken care of, so there won't be any other little Harveys running around. And uh, he come to live with us then. Uh, the only problem we've got right now is our 15-year-old cat, Brassie, is not real thrilled about having a new brother. <laughs> so we don't know yet how that's going to work. We're hoping in time that she'll come around, too. Uh, Coco Archuini really likes Harvey. So, But anyway, I wanted to introduce Harvey. And where we got the name from is the movie Harvey, the old Jimmy Stewart movie. Uh, as you know, we're Harvey uh, the Puka, if you're familiar with the story. Harvey the Pooka kind of uh, appeared out of thin air to Jimmy Stewart, who played Elwood P. Dowd. And uh, this is where I got the name Harvey from, and it's Harvey. And Harvey in the movie was called a Pooka, which is a mythical Irish sprite.
character. However he wants down, now I'm going to put him down. Okay, there you go, buddy. Uh, anyway, Puka is a mythical Irish, kind of like a sprite or a little spirit type thing that appears to people. So anyway, that's little Harvey, and that's Harvey's story. And we're thrilled to have him. He's a nice cat. He's the best cat I think I've ever had in terms of temperament. He's real laid back. He's just really nice, really nice kitty. Uh, it's my first experience with a Tomcat. My other kitties have been all girls. So um, we're grateful to have Harvey, and we're glad we were able to rescue him. So anyway, really appreciate you guys joining me. I know Harvey appreciated meeting you all as well. And uh, please, uh, if you got any suggestions on future topics, please let me know. I'll be doing, try to do another podcast, maybe a little less time than what this one took. I know it's been a couple months since I last posted, so I'm hoping I can put another one up, maybe in another few weeks. I really don't want to put a ton of stuff up unless I've got something to say. Um, and I had enough stuff uh, stored up to really uh, make this, uh, you know, worthwhile. So anyway, I'm going to sign off for now. I appreciate you joining me. And until the next time, happy crafting. We'll see you later. Goodbye.